G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be taking you through my edition of some sort of power ranking, I guess, based on the first five rounds of the AFL season. We've seen some pretty surprising results across the board, but overall things are starting to settle a little bit. We're getting a good feel for who the best teams are and who the pretenders are. It's still only early, so a lot can change between now and September, but I think we can start to have a look at who the main players are for the 2021 season. Now, the whole idea of the power ranking is more or less to rank the teams in the order I think they're a real chance to win the flag so from 18th to 1st it's really hard to form the criteria of it because it's always going to be a little bit arbitrary a little bit subjective I mean if you wanted to break it down into wins and losses that's what the ladder's for so we're going to try and look past that a little bit and try and rank the teams based on what level of threat they are to the premiership so like I usually do in my videos I'm going to go from 18th up to 1st and have a little look at a bit of a snapshot of where we think that team is and what that might look like at the end of the season as well before we get into the video, I'd appreciate you guys checking out the link in my description to the Cold World podcast. We've recently released a new podcast talking about the Jake Paul and Ben Askren fight and also a little bit about what it's like to be approaching your 30s. It's a little side creative project that I do on YouTube as well with my roommate Dylan, and I'd really appreciate your support, so go check that out. Also, if you haven't already, go check out Juzi's channel. That is also a link in the description, and you get to see our weekly show, The Drew Footy Show, wrapping each round as it comes. But make sure you're watching those at the end of this video. For now, let's talk talk about where the 18 teams are for 2021. In 18th spot, no brainer, this one is North Melbourne. They're the only team that's winless so far, 0-5 and, and something like 45% on the ladder as well. And that really speaks volumes about how competitive or non-competitive rather they've been in the season so far. Haven't really put up too much of a fight in any of their games. And I think the fact that they got slapped by Gold Coast, who's probably one of the next worst teams, shows how far off the mark they are. Look, they will bob up and have a win at some point of the season. I have no doubt about that, but they're a very young and raw side and a clear choice for 18th. In 17th spot, I'm gonna go with the Gold Coast Suns, the team that's only win has come up against the only team lower than North Melbourne, and they smacked them by something like 59 points. There's so much to like about Gold Coast, but if you're assessing them on the here and now, right now, they've had two honorable losses, I would say, decent in Perth and decent against Adelaide as well, but overall, haven't done much to elevate themselves out of the bottom two on my current ranking, so that's where I see them. In 17th spot, we've got Hawthorne, and the only thing separating them from being winless is a huge comeback against Essendon in round one, but since then, they haven't really done too much to elevate them as a finals contender. They've been mostly competitive in all their games, but overall, it's not a whole lot to write home about. This is no doubt a rebuilding the year for them. I don't think they have the third worst list at the moment, but I think third last, that's where they are on the ladder, and I think the rankings reflect that as well. Rounding out my bottom four is Essendon, also on one and four, but with a slightly healthier percentage at 91%. Their one outstanding win over St. Kilda this year is probably what elevates them above the bottom three there. They've been pretty inconsistent with their effort, which is to be expected of a young side, and they've also been hit with injuries, but overall, it hasn't been overwhelmingly bright for Essendon. In 14th spot, I've got Carlton, who sit two and three at something like 96%, and on paper, it's not a terrible sort of start, but there have been some pretty average performances in there, and not really competitive enough against Port Adelaide to really convince me. They've had one outstanding performance against Fremantle where they showed what they have and maybe that form is still yet to come in the second half of the season. Teams can improve in the second half of the year but based on the data we have from Carlton I think 14th is about right. Next up you've got Collingwood who sit 1-4 and four at 87% and the fact that they're 1-4 and four probably makes them look a little bit worse than they are. I do think they're clearly better than the teams that I've listed below them and in fact they've beaten Carlton. They haven't had the easiest start in terms of a fixture by any means. They've had an away loss to the Eagles recently. They lost to the Dogs and they lost to the Lions who are a quality team as well. I think they're well outside the finals race as it stands just picked up a few injuries as well which doesn't help but they did win a final last year and I think that does hold a little bit of value going into this power ranking I think they're clearly better than the teams below them in 13th spot we've got the GWS Giants and they're a team that probably would have been a Monty for the bottom four two weeks ago but they've bounced back with two really good wins away against Collingwood to win by five goals and then beating their crosstown rivals in Sydney that's pretty compelling form and it's starting to show they're getting a bit of confidence back I think their best 22 is at least mid-table quality and we're starting to see that come through a little bit. We know they lost a lot of players. My question mark over them is probably their depth as much as anything. So over a course of a long season, are they really finals contenders? Probably not. I think 13th is about right right now. In 12th spot, we've got St. Kilda, and this is the team that's probably fallen the most from estimations at the start of the year with some really baffling form. They sit at 2-3 and three at 71%. They've had some really horrendous losses, but they've also had a pretty good win over the Eagles. The losses against Essendon and Richmond, however, were really, really poor, and you do have to ask the question, what is going on there? Of course, I'm still trying to consider a little bit of previous season form as well. The Saints won a final last year and that's why I still back them to be better than the teams below them, but they're not really 
quite in that finals race just yet. Next up, we have Adelaide in 11th, sitting at 3-2, and two, and they've probably been one of the more surprised packets this season with some really good wins, but they kind of got exposed a little bit against Frio in Adelaide last week. They had some really excellent performances against the Cats in round one, and I thought their home win over the Suns was really compelling as well, but there may be a little bit of an overliance on Tex, who's playing absolutely out of his skin at the moment. Can they sustain this form going forward too much longer? I'm not really convinced, and that's why I only have them in 12th right now. So I do realize I messed that up. Adelaide were actually 10th, and now Fremantle are the team that I'm slotting into 9th spot on the back of a good away win against the aforementioned Crows. Fremantle have been ticking over solidly this season. They've had one really bad performance against the Blues where they got annihilated at Marvel, and that's kind of skewed the perception a bit. But on the surface, I think things are ticking over acceptably well for Fremantle this season so far. They haven't lost at home yet. It's starting to mature a little bit as a side, and you can see the difference in maturity levels against the Crows in Adelaide. That win for me has probably elevated them a little bit in these rankings. I have them in ninth, although I don't know if I see them making a realistic finals push. It depends how long they can keep the form up. Sliding into my top eight in these rankings, I've got Geelong sitting at three and two. And to be fair, these performances that they've put out have been very unconvincing. Three unconvincing wins so far to date and a couple of not great losses as well. They had some unconvincing wins over the lines of GMHBA, Hawks and North Melbourne. They got done by the Crows in round one, which we put down as probably an anomaly, but I don't think they've really lifted their game too much since that game. With the quality they have on the list and the fact they made a grand final last year, I don't have them sliding too far yet. Definitely still an outside chance to win the flag and three and two is not a bad ratio at all. I just have them down a little bit because I don't think they're playing great football. In seventh spot, I've got the West Coast Eagles sitting at three and two and 115%, which is healthy. And all in all, it's been a fairly solid season for the Eagles so far. One blip on the radar was that terrible second half against St. Kilda. And, you know, losing to the Saints in Melbourne on paper isn't terrible, but it did come at a time where the Saints were <laughs> playing horrible either side of that. And I think the drop-off in effort was the most alarming thing. But for the most part, recorded three good wins at home now against the Pies, Power, and the Gold Coast Suns. And they're ticking along okay for a side that's probably just outside that top level of contender. Personally, I think they need to lift one to two gears probably in the second half of the year to really push for a flag. In sixth spot, I've got Brisbane who sit two and three and started the season very unconvincingly, but there probably have been a few mitigating factors. Obviously had to stay in Melbourne during that little COVID period, which may have affected them a little bit as well. Got stunned by Sydney in round one, and to be fair, they're not the only team that's happened to so far. Lockie Neal didn't have a great preseason by all reports, and he's just starting to find his feet. So I expect Brisbane to use this momentum going forward, and they stay in my top six because they finished top two the previous two years, and are still definitely in the thick of it. In fifth spot, I have the Sydney Swans, the biggest surprise packer from this year. They sit four and one, and a one bad stoppage defense away from being 5-0 and being talked up as a real top four chance. Not everyone may be convinced by the Swans, but I still think their most compelling performance against Richmond at the G, where they won by something like 45 points, you can't ignore that. So while they're a young team that may fluctuate, they still have the capacity to beat the best teams on their home deck. Their lack of experience may keep them outside the top four or even top six as the season wears on. I don't know how they'll travel over the course of the year, but their form line has been really compelling and they haven't even really relied on Buddy Franklin. Now let's get into the top four teams. I've got the Melbourne Demons who sit impressively at 5-0 and, and 148%. They've won every game they've played so far and look very good in the process. They do have some injury excuse as well with no real tall forward options with Ben Brown and Wiedemann out of the side up until this point. There's still a lot of upside for this team. I don't know if they've had a serious challenge yet, but I think if they keep building on this momentum, they could be a very strong side come September. For me, their lack of experience and inconsistency over the previous years probably drops them out behind those top three I'm about to mention, but it's been really smooth sailing for the day so far. In third spot, I've got Port Adelaide sitting at 4-1 and one and 126%, and I think they can be very satisfied with the first month and a week that the season has seen so far. Yes, they had a blip coming over to Perth to play the Eagles, but I just think that was probably more of a mental thing. Don't know if they showed up in that first half before recovering pretty well in the second half, and they've looked convincing in all their other wins, including a big home win over the Tigers. They finished top last year. They were a kick off the grand final in their 4-1 this year. Definitely a major contender for this season. Now, the top two I find really hard to split. I was very tempted to put Richmond first, but I'm going to put them into second right now on the basis that they're two wins behind the Bulldogs. So I felt a little bit harsh putting the Bulldogs second behind them. But I think, you know, the reputation that Richmond has, their ability to live for big games and come finals, they're going to be the team to watch as far as I'm concerned. Sydney did a number on them and Port Adelaide managed to get the points as well. So while I'd be pretty comfortable as a Richmond fan, 
probably don't have the number one ranking spot for me right now. And in top spot of these power rankings, I can't go past the Bulldogs who sit 5-0 with an incredible percentage of something like 179%. I think they've well and truly answered the queries about their scoring power. I think their forward line on paper is not necessarily by any means the best, but they're getting it job done with a strong, strong midfield with ability to rotate guys like Bont through there as well. To be honest, the dogs haven't looked vulnerable at all. They've absolutely butchered the bottom teams and their probably biggest challenge so far was West Coast at Marvel. I think it's fair to say that they were a better team for longer on that day, so deserve the win. So at 5-0, and they're well primed for a top four spot, which has eluded them over the previous years. So there you have it, guys. That is the 18 teams I have ranked in terms of how much of a threat they are to the premiership this year. I do want to clarify as well, it's not really a ladder prediction as such. It's kind of trying to plot the form lines against preseason expectations as well. The final ladder will be dictated by all kinds of variables like fixture and injuries and stuff like that. My intention was just trying to rank the teams based on what we've seen so far. As always, I welcome you to let us know in the comments what you thought of my rankings, what you would change. And also while we're at it, why don't you just throw in a grand final prediction as well. At the moment, I'm feeling Bulldogs and Richmond, but Port Adelaide is just as good a chance as anyone as well. So it's really tight at the top, I think. Thanks for watching, guys. I'd appreciate if you could like the video if you have enjoyed it and got this far. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.